Today's episode is about this beautiful baby, the tomato, which makes every food taste better and which changed almost everyone's life and everyone's taste. Why is a tomato so nice and every time we eat it and in many of the foods in some kind of like a tomato paste, puree or juice, why is it there? Today I want to talk about this and then I want to make a Refika version of canned salsa, which is this world famous dip or additive to many foods from meat to pilavs and then I want to tell you the Turkish version, Turkish relative of salsa, which is salsa in the name of a sauce adapted into some foods then it turns into something called salcha i want to also introduce you to salcha and how you can make it at home in turkish cuisine we use salcha so much almost 50 percent of the recipes involve some kind of salcha and now we even have sayings the food should have salcha and women should have culture i like big butts and i cannot lie you other brothers can't now, I want to first start with Refika version of salsa and while I put them to cooking, I want to tell you why tomatoes are so different in taste and why everyone loves it so much and it's not a surprise, there's a chemical reason behind it. For example, when you make a classic salsa, fresh one, you put all these ingredients, dice them or put them into processor and mix them, then here you have the salsa. When everyone cans them, what they usually do is they first dice it and then cook it a bit and then can it. But we're not gonna do it that way. We're gonna add a charcoal flavor in it. So what we're gonna do, this could be any kind of cast iron. With a cast iron pan, I'm gonna grill them. Create a little like poke at the bottom, like boiling, and then add my tomatoes. Now I'm gonna use 1.25 kilogram of tomatoes but I'm gonna give the recipe for two and a half kilos so that you're gonna have like six jars or seven jars of great salsa. The tomatoes I use, you can use any kind of tomatoes but romaine tomatoes are very rich in meat and very low on water so these types are better when you make something like salsa or salsa. The most important thing is tomatoes should be ripe. It shouldn't be like you know when you eat it is kind of raw that taste shouldn't happen. So I have one and a half onion. I'm gonna cut the onions one more time like this. And now the chilies. In Turkey, we have just these kind of chilies, which are closer to Mexican chilies. Three is hot enough. If you want it mildly hot, you can just use two or one. And I have 200 grams of green peppers, which are not hot. And now also I have two cloves of garlic they are skin on and i'm gonna add them directly like this and these are gonna grill for about 25 minutes which means every part has a burn mark and it becomes softer so and if any of them cooks before you think you can take it out of the fire immediately you can use any kind of cast iron pan if you don't have cast iron you can use stainless steel but don't use teflon pans mm. because the pan gets really heated up and the vapors are very unhealthy for your health. I actually don't use any non-stick coating for this. It started to get color immediately, so I change it every one, two minutes. It started to smell great already. And this grilling is not very classical actually, but it works marvels. And the taste is so high, you'll be surprised even if you're a salsa fan all your life. And now I want to tell you why these beautiful tomatoes are in so much recipes and why we love them so much. The main reason is tomato in itself carries umami. It's called the fifth taste. If you think about the taste, saltiness, sourness, sweetness and bitterness. These are the four tastes of every food we eat and these like very indifferent food and that's how we create the taste. But what the fifth taste umami does is it fills your mouth with whatever the other four tastes are. It enhances and heightens all the tastes. 
it's like think of it as like tomato like this big giant and you're like these little humans are the four other tastes that giant takes all those and brings them to another level so what happens is if you eat a tomato for example it's not so right some parts are more pale and inside is white you feel as if it's nonsense it's like you're eating like a plastic or a raw mushroom or something but then as it ripens, the amount of umami inside the tomato increases dramatically at the end of summer tomatoes and it's all ripe. Umami is naturally found in not so many foods, but several. It's in cured meat like cold cuts, pastoramis, etc, etc. And also it's found in older cheese, the yellower, the better the taste. Sourdough bread, sardines in some kind of pickles. Olive. Not in all olives. In green olives, you don't have it. In black olives, you do have it. Think of the Parmesan cheese. You pop a Parmesan cheese in your mouth, your mouth starts to water and it's not a surprise. You remember that calcified salts, the older the Parmesan is more expensive and the umami is higher. That calcified salts are some kind of umami. That is how it works. And when you turn this tomato into a salsa, into a salsa, and you add it into another food, or you dip your chicken, your bread inside, what happens? It increases the taste of that chicken, increases the taste of that bread more. Now, this is almost done. How do you understand it's done? All parts of it is soft. That's how you understand it. Some parts can be overcooked like these black parts. What we're going to do, we're going to put them into a hammam, a hot bath, so that they, with their own vapors, they're going to get softer and it will be easier to peel them. Look at these tomatoes. They are beautiful. I'm also going to put them all in like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a plate on top and then I'm going to peel them like this. Is it too hot? A bit too, too hot, but I wanted to do it immediately. Now what I do is I take all the skin off and then with my knife, chop it. If there's a top part, you can discard like this. I can make it into a puree, but I like a little bit of chunkiness, so I leave the bit of chunkiness inside. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change my plate and Put all this beautiful with all the juices here and then this will continue with the edge of your spoon you can take the top part out like this guys you know that we sell these cutting boards the knives and the herbs in Etsy and now we're trying to reduce the shipment costs and etc so if you want to buy, I'm going to like put a link somewhere here, here. And if you support us, that would be wonderful. This will continue for the tomatoes. Then I'm going to show you how to take the skins off the peppers. Guys, if you like watching our videos, I have a little favor to ask. Please press like and show how you feel about it. Also leave a little bit of comment, whatever you like, so that the word spreads. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Now, when it comes to the peppers, if there's a very brown part, like a black part, you can take it with your finger like this. You can use other kinds of green peppers with thicker skin as well. This is the Turkish most common pepper. And I'm going to leave the seeds as well. It's also a nice texture and flavor. So now I'm going to put it with the tomatoes. In peppers, you don't have to take all the skin, but whatever the skin that comes into your hands that is easily taken out is enough. In peppers, we start with the burn part, which is the most delicate one. And then either with our hands or with a spoon, take the rest like this. Voila. Oh, now. <coughs> mm. <coughs> now, 
it's very hot. Watch your hands. If you have a scar in your hand, that might hurt. Because this is more meaty, it's easier to tear the skin like this. And if you don't want to use your hands, you can always use the spoon like this. Same as the green pepper, but I'm gonna slice the hot chilies more so that someone wouldn't just like have a whole lump of hot chili, but it will be distributed. Now, that's life sometimes you burn stuff and like this part is very much burned it's a lot of taste but what i'm gonna do i'm just like gonna thinly take the burn parts out and the burn skins from the onions you might say like you can put the onions with the skin on but then the inside do not cook very much and i don't like that and even like this the onions are chunky if it's not like see-through like this but more whitish what you should do is put a bit of olive oil and then fry your onions a bit so that they don't like have this like raw effect now finally the garlic we have two cloves here i take the burnt skin off these are not burned but dark brown these are nice what i'm gonna do is crush it like this and add it like a puree we're finished but there's a good juice here and i'm gonna put this brown very nice juice inside as well i'm gonna turn on the heat i put plenty of olive oil until the s of the pan is covered with olive oil as my grandfather used to teach me how to cook and first i'm gonna put there's everything here but more garlic and onions i'm gonna put this, this part first and then rest of the tomatoes a heap teaspoon of salt like this generous one and then sugar sugar should be one heap tablespoon is good but a little bit more of that helps it even better if you're against it don't use it but what sugar does is because the tomato is acidic it increases the ph level and makes it taste better actually and the sourness is also balanced for that reason and to this quite generously 100 milliliters of vinegar wow. yes but it becomes so beautiful if it's white wine vinegar it's better if you don't use wine vinegars you can use white grape vinegar that will be very nice half a teaspoon of cumin one heaped teaspoon of thyme on the place when we had the holiday we had wild pigs boars and we used to carry everything to the boars and we were at the end of the holiday we were so friends with them when they saw us they would like wag their tails now this is going to simmer on very low heat for 10 minutes for two reasons for all the taste to get into one another secondly for the heat to come up so we're going to make it as a preserve so it has to be really hot meanwhile what i'm going to do is i'm going to put all these beautiful things into a bag to take it to my house for the garden to do what compost to do compost yes the final thing i'm gonna add to my salsa is fresh coriander i have here 25 30 sprigs like half a bunch and i'm gonna chop them like this if you don't have fresh coriander in where you live you can use some coriander or coriander seeds as well but the fresh coriander has a different taste. Here they get in. And as you can see, the salsa is ready. And also for the preserve, the jars should be kept really well and like they shouldn't have any microbes or anything on them. So what I did after I washed them, I put them into the oven like this. And now I'm going to put it into 120 degrees so that they get really hot and the jars will be sterilized. Now, for the lids, because lids have plastic inside them, I'm not going to put them in the oven. I'm just going to put it into boiling water for several seconds and take them off and put them in here. And because it's already very hot, the water inside is going to evaporate. That's how we sterilize the lids. Now, I can take my jar out of the oven like this. The sides of the jar shouldn't be dirty so that it might enhance the bacteria to form, etc., etc. So I'm putting this funnel. It's uh, sold in Mexico, and if you don't have it, it's very nice also to put the desserts when you're putting the desserts onto a, like a glass or something. The edges don't get dirty. So here we go. 
Now the leaves are very bright green, but with the heat, they're gonna turn into a paler color, but it's okay. And finally, to cut the air connection of the sauce, I'm gonna put some more olive oil on top so that this acts like another preserve. Yes, all done. And I'm gonna do this for the rest of the jars. We made three, but actually I have another extra one here, but I'm not gonna put it in the jar, but I want to eat with the whole crew. And uh, you might think that when we put it, it's a bit watery, but I want to show you. This is the ones that we have made. It was watery like a mint ago, but it changes the color and the juice is absorbed by the tomatoes and the peppers again. And the next day it becomes something like this. For example, this is the one that I made yesterday. Our salsas are ready, Refika style. And now it's time to enjoy it. And here I want to put... As you can see, Bahar is now up here. Are we surprised? No. And we're gonna give the first one to her. Would you like a bit of... Cheese, of course, always. Cheese, of course. And here, the perfect bite goes to the director. Ow! Mm. Second oh, one to the chef. Beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, you can eat it with a bit of chicken like this. And some cucumber. When the fame of salsa came to these soils and the beauty of tomato, we turned it into something called salsa. Every year in the beginning of autumn, we make our salsas. Last year, we made red pepper salsa and now we're gonna make the tomato salsa and I want to tell you how easy it is. First we take our tomatoes, we cut them from their bottom, we make an X and then we put them into boiling water for a minute and then take them and put them into cold or normal water and then we take the skins off. We put them into the food processor and make it a puree. After we make the puree, we put them into big sacks for the extra water to drip. And in those sacks, we press it with stones. Any kind of big stone would do. Or if you have a big pestle mortar like we do, you can use that. I don't know where it is still. I don't know. There, my pestle mortars that I haven't seen in a year and a half. And then after it waits for a night, all the excess water is dripped. So we put it into an oven. Traditionally, it's laid under the sun and it gets dry and it's a better way. But in the conditions like Istanbul and when there's lots of humidity, we just put it on the stove top and then with a bit of olive oil and salt, we cook it until the color changes a little bit and it becomes hot and solid. Then we put it into jars. Jarring is the same as salsa, but we shouldn't leave any air drops. So we press it with the back of the spoon. We layer the salsa and put some olive oil on top. Close the lid and then we have the salsa to use for the whole year. We have pot dishes in Turkey where, for example, it could be chickpea recipe or a potato recipe, it could be a pasta, it could be some pilav. What we do is we put a bit of olive oil and then we put some onions because onions have this sophisticated taste. We cook the onions until they turn pink in Turkey, we say. And then we put the salsa. Salsa becomes a puree and we like beat the salsa and it's distributed at the bottom of the pan. Then we add the chickpeas and we add the meat and also some bones if you like and add the water and then everything, whatever it is, is cooked in that delicious water which has the umami from the tomatoes and that's how we do it in Turkey. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed our comeback. This year we're gonna have 
a lot of new stuff, a lot of interesting things. And if you have watched this video until now, whatever you wish us to do, please write below. We look at all the comments and we can shape whatever we want to do accordingly. And this year I want to add like some mashups from different countries. I want to have some collaboration with different cultures and etc. Now the COVID is lightened in its own way. I want to take you to different places in Turkey, show you how for example, olive oil is made, etc, etc. So take care for now. I uh, hope to see you next week. Lots of love. Perfect bite size. Salsa burger. <laughs>